Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the great Irving Berlin musical, Miss Liberty, starring Gordon McRae and his bright young guest, Virginia Haskins. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another memorable musical play is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marlon Miller. Good evening, everybody. Virginia Haskins and I want you to come to New York with us. In the days before, there was a Statue of Liberty in the harbor. When the streets were lit with gas lamps, and when the streetcars all had horses prancing out in front of them. But when you really wanted to get someplace in style, you said, uh, Let's take an old-fashioned walk, I'm just bursting with thought. What a tale could be told if we went for an old-fashioned walk. Let's take a stroll through the park. Down a lane where it's dark And a heart that's controlled May relax on an old-fashioned walk I know for a couple Who seem to be miles apart There's nothing like walking And having a heart-to-heart I know a girl who declines couldn't make up her mind She was wrapped up in soul Coming home from an old-fashioned walk Say there, young fella Uh, yes, sir Are you a photographer? Horace Miller and Cam Ratcher Service <laughs> We're from Prenders Falls, Indiana Well, I'm a newspaper publisher And my photographer didn't show up to cover the big shindigs the city hall. Oh, I've uh, I've already got a newspaper job working for Mr. Bennett on the New York Herald. I'm Mr. Bennett of the Herald. Huh? You must be my photographer who didn't show up. Well, uh, I was there, Mr. Bennett, but I, I didn't see much to photograph. Just the mayor and a lot of celebrities. <laughs> Just the mayor. Say, I got a real picture. The first photograph of the Statue of Liberty, fresh off the boat from France. Let me see that picture. Huh. Why, this is just a lot of packing cases. Well, how do you expect they got the Statue of Liberty across the Atlantic? She didn't swim. (laughs) If she had, you'd have missed the picture. You're fired, Miller. Fired? I don't ever want to see your face again. Oh, gee whiz. Fired. My first day. I'm sorry I ever came to New York City. I I guess I should have stayed in Prenders Falls. A little fish in a big pond has plenty of room to swim. But swimming around our big fish, all ready to pounce on him. Back to his little pond, he starts to roam. The little fish spreads his fins and begins to swim. Back home, that's me. A little fish in a big pond. All wrong, that's me A little fish where a little fish don't belong A little man in a big town gets butterflies in his dome I'm ready to spread my fins and begin to swim back home To the little pond pond. Where a little fish fish and a little man man belong No, by golly. I can't go back home to Prenders Falls until I've done something important and, and, and worthwhile. Hey, does anybody know how much it costs to take a boat to Paris? Paris. <laughs> 
This little fish sure took himself a big swim. Say, who's that singing? My child, you know the acoustics underneath this bridge are better than the National Opera. I know, Grandmother. But wouldn't it be nice if we could have a house to live in? What's wrong with living under bridges? We have a view, plenty of fresh air, running water. Mm, just the same. Wouldn't it be nice to have a home? I know, Grandmama. I'd love to do what all the American girls want to do. And what is that? the magic word. The magic word? But it must only be used on an American, preferably from the USA. What is the magic word, Grandma? The magic word is... Uh, yes? Yes. Yes? Say yes to the right American and all our troubles will be over. <laughs> well, I'd better go out and peddle my flowers. Remember what I told you, child? Hmm. Only the magic word. Well, hello there. What's the matter? Can't you talk? Yes. Say, you're a French girl, aren't you? Yes. I, I guess you'd probably guess that I was an American. 
<laughs> I guess. <laughs> yes. Gee whiz, you're, you're, you're pretty. Yes? Would you like to know what I came over to Paris for? Yes. I'm looking for the girl who posed for the Statue of Liberty. Yes? You wouldn't know who she was by any chance? Yes. Say, it wouldn't be you by any chance. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, holy Toledo. Talk about lucky. I, I find the girl I'm looking for right off the bat. Hey, can I take your picture? Yes. Oh, wonderful. Now stand just like you did for the statue. One arm up in the air. Ah, that's it. And, uh, and this book in the crook of your elbow. Yes. Good. Now, watch the birdie. Oh, boy, oh, boy, this is historic. Oh, wait till Mr. Bennett sees this. <laughs> Straight cablegram to Mr. James Gordon Bennett, New York Herald. Have found the girl who posed for Statue of Liberty. Send $1,000 at once to bring her to America. Greatest publicity since Stanley found Livingstone. Signed, Horace Miller. Now, who the deuce is Horace Miller? No matter. If it's true, it'll double my circulation. Clerk, cable $500 to bring Miss Liberty to America. <laughs> you, Miss Liberty. Are you calling me? Oh, gosh, gee whiz, for a minute I was afraid you'd change bridges. <laughs> Monique, who is this improbable young man? Here's your boat ticket to America. America? Grandmother has to come, too. Well, okay, I'll, I'll get a ticket for her, too. Monique, how did this happen? <laughs> the magic word. I just said yes. But what in blazes did he ask? Did he ask you? Well, do you, do you want me to explain why I'm doing all this? Pray do. Why are you being so sweet to me and to my grandmother? Well, you see, in America, we do everything fast. Why, we even fall in love in a hurry. I love you, I love you. There's no other way, just one way to say I love you. As I may, that's all I can say. I love you. Much more could be said if I thought with my head. But I only can sing with my heart. I love you. I love you. And you're Monique, why does your nice young man keep calling you Miss Liberty? Oh, Horace thinks I'm the girl who models for the Statue of Liberty. Model for the... <coughs> Why, Grandmama, what's the matter? When he finds out the truth, I just wonder if he'll still want to sing that song. Much more could be said if I thought with my head But I only can think moment, we'll continue with Act Two of Miss Liberty. 
One of the things I like best about riding a train is sitting here in air-conditioned comfort and watching the landscape rush by the window. Wonder how fast we're going. Oh, that's easy. I just clocked it. We're going 62 miles an hour. How do you know that? Well, it took us just 58 seconds to travel from one mile post to another along the right-of-way. And this chart here shows that a mile traveled in 58 seconds means that we're doing 62 miles an hour. I clipped the chart from a handy booklet called Quiz on Railroads and Railroading, published by the Association of American Railroads. Hey, uh, does the quiz also cover train whistle signals? It sure does. That whistle you just heard is a warning signal, indicating that we're approaching a public crossing. Yes, the answers to the questions of this traveler and to hundreds of other questions that you might ask about the railroads are answered in the colorful, informative quiz booklet. For instance, quiz has a section on the fascinating history of railroads. Another covers the ingenious methods and facilities which make possible the dependability, efficiency, and economy of railroad operations and the unparalleled safety of railroad travel. And it is crammed with exciting photographs of railroads in action. Yes, Quiz contains the answers to many of the things you may have wondered about concerning the railroads. You can have a copy of this interesting booklet free of charge by merely dropping a postal card to the Railroad Hour, Transportation Building, Washington 6, D.C. Quiz is the most popular booklet ever written about railroads. More than three million copies have been received by people everywhere. Thousands of Railroad Hour listeners have already received copies. So be sure to ask for your free copy of Quiz on Railroads and Railroading. Tonight, send your name and address to the Railroad Hour, Transportation Building, Washington 6, D.C. I'll give you that address again at the end of this program. Now, here is Act Two of the Irving Berlin Robert E. Sherwood musical, Miss Liberty, dramatized by Lawrence and Lee, starring Gordon McRae and Virginia Haskins, with Hanley Stafford and Gloria Gordon. Liberty, Miss Liberty, we welcome you here to our shore. Liberty, Miss Liberty, the key to the city is yours. With banners and streamers on fur You're not just a symbol of a statue that we love But the most beautiful girl in the world Would you like to dine some evening with the Astor? She'd love to Would you like to play a week at Tony Pastor? She'd love to Would you like to come to Trinity on Sunday? She'd love to Would you like to launch a battleship on Monday? She'd love to Here's a market price with you from the president to you Here's some winter flannels from the nation's mother for a ball, you'll be welcome at the hall. Here's a cough drop from the famous Spirited Brothers. I thank you, I thank you, I'm grateful to be sure. Like money in the bank, you have made me feel secure. Your Congress, your Senate, your President so dear. But mostly Mr. Bennett, the man who brought me here. Liberty, Miss Liberty. With banners and streamers on furl You're not just a symbol of a statue that we love But the most beautiful girl in the world <laughs> Miss Liberty, let me welcome you to our shores I'm James Gordon Bennett, publisher of the New York Herald Be nice to him, honey He's paid for your trip Oh, dear Mr. Bennett, I'm charmed Have you met my grandmother, the Countess Dupont? I'm honored, your ladyship. I hope you stay that way. <laughs> speech, Miss Liberty. Yeah, speech, speech. Please, please, Miss Liberty. Will you favor us with a speech? Well, uh, I simply love New York, and I'm so glad to be here. But I think there's just one teensy-wincy thing that I ought to explain to you. Psst. Monique. What is it, Grandmama? There's a new magic word. Shut up. <laughs> Monique, you're wonderful. 
You know, all of New York is in love with you. Well, I don't care about all of New York. How do you feel? Oh, I feel fine. And you know, Mr. Bennett not only hired me back in his paper, he gave me a $2 raise. Oh, congratulations, Horace. Why, if this keeps up in 50 years, I could be editor of the paper. Just think, if I hadn't discovered you, I might have gone back to Prendus Falls and never amounted to nothing. Oh, you know what you are? What? A little fish in a big pond has got to have lots of heart. For swimming around our big fish, what if he's the least bit smart? Back to his little pond, he doesn't go. The little fish spreads his fins and begins to grow, grow, grow. That's you, a little fish in a big pond, all right. Me too, a little fish, but we gotta stand up and fight. A little man in a big town don't have to get out and roam. Stop taking it on the chin and begin to feel at home. In the bigger pond, where the bigger fish and the bigger men belong. Yep, I guess I'm a pretty big fish now. You! Oh, hello there, J.G. <clears throat> House tricks. You scoundrel. You buffoon. You nitwit. You scapegrace of a nincompoop. Something the matter, Mr. Bennett? <laughs> Miss Liberty, may I ask how old you are? Why, I'm 23. The New York world, my chief competitor, says you're a fraud. What? It seems the statue was carved more than 20 years ago. May I inquire, mademoiselle, if you pose for it in your cradle? Oh, I didn't pose for the Statue of Liberty. You, 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 you didn't? No. But you said you did. Oh, no, you said I did. And I just didn't say I didn't. Young lady, you and the so-called Countess will be shipped out of the country on the next boat. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Bennett. You, you, you can't do that. Can't I? Why don't you go down to the Bureau of Immigration to see him off? Reporting passengers, prepare to board ship. Please don't be sad, Grandmama. Who's sad? I'm surprised we got away with it as long as we did. Countess, Monique, are, are they really going to deport you? Any minute. The boat's almost ready to sail. Well, it isn't right. Even if you didn't pose for the statue, you're still Miss Liberty. And how can we send Miss Liberty away from the United States? It's, it's all wrong. Well, you know what it says on the base of the new statue. Give me your tired, your food. Your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The wretched refuse of your teeming soul. Send these, the homeless tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the gold. Show. Send these the 
love you, Horace. Monique, I have an idea. <laughs> Look, if we get married, you'll be an American citizen. And they can't divorce you. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, but what about Grandmama? Don't worry. I'll get back in. Nobody can say I was too young to pose for the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> oh, money. You know, I'll take you back to Prentice Falls. Of course, I don't have any money, so I don't know how we'll get there. I know her. Let's take an old-fashioned walk. I'm just bursting with talk. What a tale could be told if we went for an old-fashioned walk. Let's take a stroll through the park. Down a lane where it's dark And a heart that's controlled May relax on an old-fashioned walk I'd know for a couple Who'd seem to be miles apart There's nothing like walking And having a heart to heart Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Lovely Virginia Haskins will be back in just a moment. And our hearty thanks to Hanley Stafford, who was Mr. Bennett, Miss Gloria Gordon, who was the Countess, and to our entire company. Miss Liberty, with music by Irving Berlin and book and lyrics by Robert E. Sherwood, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? Behind the giant locomotives of today is a fascinating history of constant change and improvement from the teapot kettle engines of more than a century ago. And you can trace this dramatic development in a pictorial history of locomotives only one of the many interesting features in Quiz on Railroads and Railroading. This attractive booklet, answering hundreds of questions about the American railroads, can be yours free of charge by just dropping a card with your name and address to the Railroad Hour, Transportation Building, Washington 6, D.C. That address again, the Railroad Hour, Transportation Building, Washington 6, D.C. Thank you, Marvin. Now, folks, here again is our guest star, Vivacious Virginia Haskins. Vivacious Virginia? Well, thank you, Gorgeous Gordon. <laughs> Please, I only use that name when I'm wrestling. <laughs> then tell us, what's on the card next week, champ? Well, it's quite an occasion, Virginia. A few weeks ago, we presented my romance, the last Broadway show written by the late, great Sigmund Romberg. And next week, we're doing his first New York show, Blue Paradise. And Nadine Connor will be here from the Met to sing the top line. And we hope you'll tune us in. Oh, I wouldn't miss it, Gordon. Good night. Good night, Virginia. You were wonderful. All aboard! Well, it looks as if we're ready to pull out. And so until next week, dear friends, this is Gordon McRae saying good night. Gordon McRae can soon be seen in the Technicolor production, The Desert Song. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. Now keep tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Tonight, the voice of Firestone features Cesar Siepi on NBC.